Hi everyone. I'd like to introduce you to a new series that we're starting here at Sunshine Teachers Training. And it's called the Montessori Dictionary. So what we'd like to do with this series is introduce you and explain to you some of the very common Montessori terms that we use. I found that, you know, in the Montessori uh, world, there are a lot of terms that we use and we take it for granted that everyone knows what they mean. Things like follow the child, absorbent mind, control of error. Uh, in addition to some of the materials that we use, we really do, uh, you know, sometimes we think that people know all the benefits of these Montessori materials. And so through this series, the Montessori Dictionary, I want to take you deeper into understanding some of these terms and some of the benefits and the beauty of these materials that you see around you and that I'm sure you've heard the names of. So to get this started, the term that we're going to be talking about today is the control of error. Now the control of error is something that is built into pretty much every Montessori material. And this is what gives a child the independence to work on an activity, to use it and to see where they have made a mistake and to fix that mistake and learn from that mistake. Unlike a traditional classroom, when we make a mistake, when a child makes a mistake, they wouldn't know. They could be working on a sum, they could be writing out words, and they wouldn't know whether they've made a mistake or not unless the teacher tells them that I think this is not correct, let's erase it and do it again. Now they don't really see or experience or understand how that mistake came about. Somebody just told them, you made a mistake, you need to erase it and you need to fix it. But in a Montessori classroom, they can see, they can hear, they can feel their mistake, and they will fix it for themselves, and that learning stays with them, all right? Now, I have a couple of materials here. These are from our sensorial area, and I'm going to use these to illustrate to you what the control of error means. Um, I'm gonna start with the pink tower, all right? And uh, when we show the child how to build the tower, we, the teacher will demonstrate it first, how to build the cubes into a tower. And once we are done, then we ask the child if they would like to build the tower as well. Now, when the child is working on this by themselves, they may try something different. They may experiment and they may, you know, use different blocks to try and build it in a different way. Um, and see you know what happens now when they do things like this and they look at it visually they can see that it isn't aligned it doesn't look the way that it did when you know the teacher showed them how to build it and perhaps even the balance not might not be correct and it may topple at points when they try to build it in a different way all right like that so this becomes their control of error that when they try it a different way it may not stand up straight when they build it in a different way it doesn't look aligned so visually the control of error comes across and they see that okay that doesn't look correct i think i made a mistake let me try and fix it or even if it's a very slight mistake okay they can still see visually that this is not aligned, that this one should be changed. So that is how the control of error comes across to them. I, as an adult or a teacher, don't have to tell them. I don't have to explain it to them or say, fix it. They will do it by themselves. And when they are able to correct their own mistakes, that is something that gets embedded. Remember something, there is nothing that has ever been created or invented that hasn't come about that way by making a lot of mistakes. We make mistakes, we work at it again, and we perfect ourselves. And that's what the children have the opportunity to do in a Montessori classroom. Perhaps the child doesn't realize it, okay? And they continue to build it this way and they say, yes, I'm done. We can bring their attention and we say, okay, let's look at these, I feel like something you know might need changing here so we don't tell them this is wrong you need to fix it 
we suggest to them, why don't you have a look here? Do you think you know, everything looks aligned? Does it look equal? We bring their attention to figuring it out by themselves. If they feel it's fine, we let it go. All right. So that's one example of the control of error. I'm going to show you another one with our knobbed cylinders. Okay. So these are our knobbed cylinders. There is a cylinder that goes into each socket. And the children remove these cylinders. All right. They are placed randomly. And the children need to replace each cylinder into the correct socket. Now when they're trying to do so and perhaps they pick up the wrong one and they put it in, again they can see by themselves that this just doesn't fit. So the mistake is given to them through the material and they can correct themselves and put it in the correct place. Even if they try to put a big one and it won't go, they know that this doesn't work, I need to find the correct one. So they can see where their mistake lies and they can fix it themselves. Now this control of error carries on into language, into mathematics, into practical life, into culture. And what happens is now the child can work independently. They're not constantly reliant on the teacher, waiting for them to tell them whether they've done the right thing or whether they've done the wrong thing or whether they can go ahead so the, they have control of their learning and they are able to perfect it and get better and better till they feel that they've mastered this. So the control of error is illustrated to you through these examples that we've done today. I hope you enjoyed it and please come back if you like this video. Hit the like button, subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. Until next time, have a beautiful day.